lyrics, you guys. These freaking lyrics. Hey everyone, it's May and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be unpacking and discussing Taylor Swift's new album, Folklore, and I'm so excited for this video. Um, I wanted to wait until I had really, you know, listened to the album a bunch and kind of researched what other people were saying and what the, like, discussions were about the songs so I could kind of explain it for you guys and put my input into it. So I'm so excited. As you can see, I did my hair like Taylor Swift, so please appreciate it because this took many tries and this one's probably going to fall out. I don't know how she got her hair like that, but anyway, <laughs> I'm also wearing this knit shirt in honor of cardigan because it's like cardigan material because it's too hot to wear an actual cardigan. I hate this shirt, so appreciate my effort, guys. <laughs> Actually, I spent basically all morning listening to the album and doing research and taking notes because I wanted to like kind of plan this video out because I'm usually not that good at planning videos out and I just kind of like like maybe have like a general outline but they just kind of make it up as I go which makes editing really hard for me because I have to like move things around and stuff but we're gonna try to make this organized and for some reason I had it in my head that this was gonna be a shorter video and I definitely don't think it's gonna be but let's get into it so before we even get into the songs just like talking about the album overall this is so different than anything she's done before in iTunes it actually classified it as alternative which is so funny because she started out as country and then pop and now it's like saying it's alternative so and I can kind of see like it could be pop but it's like kind of like indie pop or alternative and it's just so so interesting and so different and I'm actually not someone who is a fan of music like this too too much like I definitely prefer like commercial pop songs to more like indie style music like an album that had like a lot of just like slow songs like this isn't usually something that I gravitate toward like the only artist I can think of that I listen to a lot that's more like in that style I guess is Mitski but I wouldn't even say all of her songs are really that slow there's some that are more like upbeat but anyway that's kind of how I would compare it but anyway it's just so different for her and it just proves how diverse her range is and this for me is my favorite album lyrically. I still think Lover is my favorite album overall, but this these are her best lyrics in my opinion. Like I just we're going to we're going to get into it, but <laughs> I also have the lyrics up on my phone so I can kind of go over different lines and stuff. But yeah, let's get into it. So we're going to start with the one So the song is basically about reminiscing about like a past love affair and like thinking about what would have happened if this person had been the one. Not sure if it's about her real life or not. Um, she said like on her Instagram some of these songs are about her, some are from the perspectives of other people, people she's never met, people she knows, or people that she wished she hadn't met. So it's like you can't really just like analyze each song as if it's from her personal life because like unlike her other albums it's not necessarily that way so I don't know if this song is personal or not. Um, it does say Roaring Twenties so potentially not. Maybe it's about just like a couple she was thinking of that was fictional. I don't know. And like I don't know that each of the songs like it just has one meaning you know they all probably have like a bunch of different meanings and everyone interprets them in their own way which is why it's so special so obviously there are many different ways to interpret it but I'm not sure that she was writing the song like from her own perspective. I don't know. But um I like the little like wishing part in the chorus when it says uh, we were something don't you think so roaring 20s tossing pennies in the pool and if my wishes came true it would have been you like that's what she was wishing for like I love that and my favorite line in this song was um where was it I persist and resist the temptation to ask you if one thing had been different would everything be different today and I just feel like that's something so relatable for everyone and something that people think about a lot is just like if one thing had been different in my life, like how would my life look now? So I love that. Let's move on to Cardigan. I have a matcha smoothie, by the way. That has nothing to do with Taylor Swift. I just wanted it. There is so much to unpack with Cardigan. Because to me, this song could really have like three interpretations. So we'll start with the teenage love triangle one. Taylor Swift has said that there's a teenage love triangle in her songs. Um, so there's three songs that like have different points of view all relating to this, you know, teen happening. And this um, has been widely accepted as one of them from Betty's perspective. So this is like her singing about James. 
and I love that and we have a connection back in Betty when he says like standing in your cardigan. One of the lines that connects to it is Ch chase two girls lose the one and then when she says I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired and you'd be standing in my front porch light and I knew you'd come back to me directly references what happens at the end of Betty. So like I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired. I knew you'd miss me once the thrill from your summer fling expired and I knew you'd be standing in my front porch light at her party. I knew you'd come back to me. So I love that and I also think that for Taylor this could have been about Joe, her current boyfriend, um, when she says, and when I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed you put me on and said I was your favorite, like she's been through so many like bad breakups and whatnot and like she felt like she was just like used and like left under someone's bed and he put her on and said he like she was his favorite. I just feel like that's kind of what that line makes me think of and then I have to credit Emily and Bonnie with this. Um, I'm gonna try to mention them when I directly reference something that I didn't think of except for them because I want to give credit where credit is due. If you don't know, Bonnie Rebecca is one of my favorite YouTubers and she and her roommate and best friend Emily made a channel called Chats and Reacts and it's amazing and hilarious and they're like very <laughs> into Taylor Swift and they're very dramatic and it's so funny. And yeah, they made so many good connections and they think that album is about like her losing her music, which I will get into more later because there's songs that directly relate to that and they're not the only ones who think that. That's like something that's been on the internet and they thought that Cardigan was about like her relationship with her fans and I love that interpretation. I think it really works. So like they even pointed out how at the beginning it kind of goes through her eras. I'm not sure what vintage T brand new phone would be but high heels on cobblestones they said was red and then sequin smile black lipstick is reputation and sensual politics is lover so it's like kind of going through her eras and then when it says when you are young they assume you know nothing it kind of connects to her song only the young about like how the young young people have more power than maybe they even give themselves credit that they have it's about like connects there so it's kind of like going through her previous work it's like about her fans like how after that really, really rough period with like the whole Kanye thing and like what before like in between 1989 and Reputation like a lot of people like hated her like if you've seen her documentary Miss Americana it showed like all these like really nasty awful tweets that people were tweeting at her like saying they hated her she was like always playing the victim her music sucked blah 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 and so like she felt like an old cardigan but her fans came back to her and said that she was their favorite and that also really works with the rest of it like the the bridge and everything and also when the lyrics change in the last chorus when it says playing hide and seek and giving me your weekends I feel like that could be about her fans like how they gave her her weekends when they like went to concerts and stuff and then when it says I knew you'd linger this is okay just let me I'm just gonna read this whole verse out loud because these are some of my favorite lyrics she's ever written like this this is amazing. I knew you'd linger like a tattoo kiss. I knew you'd haunt all of my what ifs. The smell of smoke would hang around this long because I knew everything when I was young. I knew I'd curse you for the longest time, chasing shadows in the grocery line. I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired and you'd be standing in my front porch light and you'd come back to me. So that's what we already went over. But oh my god, these lyrics, you guys, these freaking lyrics, I can't. Every time I listen to that part, it just gives me chills because it is so amazing. So this part can connect to the kind of fan theory too where she says I knew you'd haunt all of my what ifs like normal people when they're just like living their lives things happen they move on and they're not necessarily like brought up again but for her she's like written these songs about the things that have happened in her life and her fans love those songs and connect with those songs and are always bringing them back up and she's playing them at concerts and so she's constantly forced to relive the hard parts of her life and the what ifs and then she says, I knew I'd curse you for the longest time chasing shadows in the grocery line. Like the price of fame and having people who love you and are fans of you is that you're going to be recognized everywhere and you can't even go grocery shopping without, you know, having to cover up and hope that no one recognizes you. Like you can't live a normal life. So like it's like she's she's cursing us <laughs> at the same time as like being grateful that we were there for her. And then I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired. It could be like there's kind of a thrill that comes from banding together and hating on someone. So like she's saying, I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired. Like once the thrill of hating on me expired, you'd kind of miss me and you'd come back to me. So like her fans that didn't like her anymore between 1999, 1989 and Reputation like came around. And yeah, when I felt like I was an old card again, you put me on and said I was your favorite. 
Okay. This was the first song I heard on the album because I like watched the music video when it premiered and I think that the music video is showing like it's a metaphor of like how like music has been with her throughout her life like when she opens the piano and it's all gold and sparkly it's like taking her to these other like magical worlds and then when she was drowning that's like the between 1989 and Reputation terrible time in her life like everyone hated her and then she opens the piano and it rescues her and it's like music brought her back and like always brings her back to herself and to like safety and I just love that so yeah I think that was all I had about that one we kind of have a lot to unpack here okay next song The Last Great American Dynasty This is the story of Holiday House, the house she bought um, on the East Coast, I believe, and it just tells the story about Rebecca Harkness, and she was a woman who was kind of demonized, it sounds like, and I think that's something Taylor Swift can relate to, and then she kind of changes it at the end, because it was about Rebecca, and then at the end it becomes about her, because she's the new owner. She changes the lyrics, and then it's like, who knows if I never showed up, what would have been? I had a marvelous time ruining everything, so it's so fun how it like changes there, and the song is like really catchy and good. Okay, next, we're gonna try to move through these a little faster. Exile. So this is reminiscent of The Last Time on Red because of the overlapping like female and male vocals. It is such a beautiful song and the, the vocals are just amazing. Um, Emily and Bonnie were talking about how it could be about how she was moving on from Calvin Harris really quickly um, with her new boyfriend and it could be about like her and Calvin's perspectives on that. This could potentially tie into the whole music drama because it's like it's like they exiled her I don't know this is something that I tried to come up with I don't know if it like works at all <laughs> I wrote might be a stretch you're not my homeland anymore so what am I defending now you were my town now I'm in exile seeing you out so it's like they were part of like this family and they exiled her I, I don't know but great song next my tears ricochet <laughs> This is one of my favorite songs on the album. Beautiful, show-stopping, amazing, I don't even know. One of my favorite Taylor Swift songs of all time. I, I just can't. This song is so beautiful and it's basically about like how she's suffering and like whoever it's about is suffering too. And like, oh god, the lyrics in this song, you guys. And she says, if I'm on fire, you'll be made of ashes too. If I'm Dead to you, why are you at the wake cursing my name, wishing I'd stayed, look at how my tears ricochet. In the last chorus she says you had to kill me but it killed you just the same. So it's just kind of about like how they're both suffering, it's kind of like how I took the overall meaning. And yeah, most people think this is about like the whole record label thing. I tried to like research this to understand it better but um, so like feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But basically what happened is she used to be with Big Machine record label and they were bought I guess guys I don't understand business stuff they were bought by Scooter Braun who also like uh, represents Kanye West so it was like this whole thing and like they didn't tell her about it before apparently so like all her music got sold to Scooter and she was like not okay with it like she never had the rights to her music because she signed the contract with Big Machine saying it was theirs but then like Scooter was in ownership of it so like things changed and stuff. <laughs> this is how I don't understand how business works and like I don't really know how like rights and stuff goes but it was a really big deal and she felt like very violated and like upset that they hadn't asked her about it and whatnot so that's basically that and as people think this is about that basically because of how it says in the chorus I didn't have it in myself to go with grace like how upset she was about it like she didn't leave peacefully and then you're the hero flying around saving face could be about either Scott, the head of Big Machine, or Scooter. Probably Scott. And then cursing my name, like wishing I'd stayed. I can go anywhere I want, anywhere I want, just not home. So I can't go back to like this record label that she's been with for years. Oh, just the lyrics. The lyrics are so good. You can aim for my heart, go for blood, but you would still miss me in my bones. And I still talk to you when I'm screaming at the sky. That line is so amazing. 
I love that line. One of my favorite lyrics. Amazing. And it says, when you can't sleep at night, you hear my stolen lullabies. So, obviously, <laughs> that seems to be about the music, like, saying it was stolen from her. Alright, next we have Mirball. This is probably my least favorite song on the album. Um, I like all the songs, I really don't feel like I even have a skip necessarily, but this is probably my least favorite. I still really like it, but yeah, I just feel like compared to the other ones, I don't like it as much. Also, I just wanted to point out that there was this tweet that said, like, can we talk about how the production of Mirrorball makes it sound like you're at a middle school or high school dance or something waiting for your crush to show up? And I was like, what the heck? Like, that's, that's so accurate. Just like the vibe of it. Oh my God. So basically, I saw this song as it could be about like her relationship with Joe or her relationship with her fans or probably a little bit of both because I want you to know I'm a mirror ball. I'll show you every version of yourself tonight. I'll get you out on the floor shimmering beautiful and when I break it's in a million pieces. So when she says I'll show you every version of yourself tonight as Emily and Bonnie pointed out it's kind of like she's talking to her fans. Could be about this album or just her music in general like how she shows us different parts of ourselves with her music. Um, and the chorus says, Hush when no one is around, my dear, you'll find me on my tallest tiptoes, spinning in my highest heels, love, shining just for you. So, seems like that's about Joe, um, and it's also a little reference to Begin Again when she says spinning in my highest heels, because in Begin Again, one of the lines is, he didn't like it when I wore high heels, but I do. So it's like showing now she, she does what she wants, and Joe's okay with it. And then when it says, I hush, I know they said the end is near. But I'm still on my tallest tiptoes, spinning in my highest heels, I was trying just for you. So I feel like the end is near could be about people saying their relationship isn't gonna last, or it could be about her career. Because in Miss Americana, she talked about how in the music industry, women, like, it's hard, or just like the entertainment industry in general, it's really hard for women to stay popular for a long time after a certain age. So people are probably saying, like, oh, her career is gonna end. And also people were kind of wondering like where she was going to go after she actually was happy and not breaking up with people all the time. But I feel like this album just proved that she clearly still has a lot to write about. And I wondered that too, like not in like a mean way, like, like I don't think she can do anything else. But like I was wondering like kind of what her next album would be like after Lover because she seems really happy. It seems like she and Joe, like I'm expecting them to like get engaged soon, <laughs> honestly. I feel like that's going to happen. So I just figured to like write about her family or something if she had kids or you know, I don't know, but this album just like went beyond my like <laughs> wildest imaginings about that because she wrote about everything. She says in the second verse, where'd it go? I'm a mirror ball, I can change everything about me to fit in. So she's like really good at people pleasing, she can fit in wherever. That's not the same as like being herself, obviously. And it says, you're not like the regulars, the masquerade revelers, drunk as they watch my shattered edges glisten. This creds to Emily and Bonnie is like, again, could be talking about Joe or the fans, but it's like, you're not like the people who just want to bash me and hate on me. Like the masquerade revelers is people who are like pretending maybe, drunk as they watch my shattered edges glisten. They're like the people that like take pleasure in seeing her suffer. And she's saying like Joe and her true fans aren't like that. And then in the bridge, when she says, I'm still on that tightrope, I'm still trying everything to get you laughing at me. I'm still a believer, I don't know why. I've never been a natural, all I do is try, try, try. I'm still on that trapeze, I'm still trying everything to keep you looking at me. Again, I see it being about Joe and her fans. Like, she's so afraid that, like, since all of her other relationships are failed, their relationship's gonna fail too. She's trying, like, everything to keep his interest and to get him to stay, kind of like in the archer. And not like she's, like, you know, like having to like put on a show for him all the time. Like she's just afraid that she won't be enough for him. And then for her fans, because she's afraid that people will lose interest, the whole industry will just like drop her and not care anymore. She's always trying to like come up with new things to keep people entertained and interested. All right, and then we have seven. Please picture me. This isn't a favorite for me, but I did really like it. It's very kind of whimsical, and this is about her childhood. It seems to be about her childhood uh, close friend who didn't have a very good home life. It says, um, I've been meaning to tell you I think your house is haunted, your dad is always mad, and that must be why I think you should come live with me and we can be pirates and then you won't have to cry or hide in the closet and just like a folk song, our love will be passed on. I love that part so much, and I like how it's kind of like bringing in like the child level to it when she says I've been meaning to tell you I think your house is haunted like it's just like a metaphor for like what's going on at home but it's like an easy way to explain it to a child if that makes sense. I just thought this was such a sweet song 
and the part when she says please picture me in the weeds before I learned civility I used to scream ferociously anytime I wanted in the bridge is like she wants this childhood friend to remember her the way she was then like before she learned how to fit in before she learned how to like mold herself to what society wanted and hold everything inside like she used to scream ferociously like she wants them to remember her like that and i love that so much yeah it's so cute and she says like and though I can't recall your face, I've still got love for you. So like she still remembers this person and still cares about them even if they like don't keep in touch anymore is how I interpreted that at least. Yeah. And then like it's kind of a reference to the whole title of the album when she says back when I um, was saying the other part, passed down like folk songs, the love lasts so long. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> my hair's coming out, excuse me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> She's saying like these all these different experiences of her life tie into today. Next we have August. But I can see us lost in the memory. August slipped away into a moment in time. Hands down my favorite song on the album. Amazing. Perfection. Just like I, I can't even deal with it. This is um, another one of the Teenage Love Triangle songs and this is the perspective of like the other girl <laughs> that James is with. Don't even look at my hair throughout the summer. <laughs> People have said like it might be Inez because in Betty, a song we'll discuss later, it, one of the lyrics says you heard the rumors from Inez. Like, so I guess it could be about Inez, but Inez just could have been someone else who <laughs> was telling Betty things. So it could just be someone else. But anyway, it's about the other girl that James was with throughout the summer. And this clearly like meant everything to her. Like she was so in love with him and wanted it to last forever, but she knew that he wasn't hers to lose. I think the reason I like this song so much is because it's like death by a thousand cuts. Like it is the death by a thousand cuts of this album, an upbeat, happy sounding song about something so devastatingly sad. So the chorus is, but I can see us lost in the memory. August slipped away into a moment in time because it was never mine. I can see us twisted in bed sheets. August slipped away like a bottle of wine because you were never mine. <laughs> oh my god. All right, next we have This Is Me Trying. I'm not sure like if this is supposed to be about something specific. It kind of sounded to me like it could be about her own life, um, not necessarily a fictional person. And it's kind of like her reflecting and kind of talking about things she regrets. By the way, a lot of the things I've been getting are from Genius Lyrics. If you guys want to look like you can look line by line to like see what people have said about it. But people have said this reminds them of Afterglow because it's like seeing her accepting her faults. So I kind of like that comparison. Uh, my favorite line from the song, I think a lot of other people's favorite line is they told me all of my cages were mental so I got wasted like all my potential. I was like, mm, that's such a good line. And my words shoot to kill when I'm mad. I have a lot of regrets about that. I was so ahead of the curve, the curve became a sphere. Fell behind all my classmates and I ended up here. Fell behind all my classmates, it's like kind of bringing it back to high school, which is mentioned a couple times in the the album. So I feel like she may be using that as a metaphor for like how she was like excelling so much in the music industry at first because like in her documentary she talks about like how when like she was like touring with 1989 and stuff and winning awards for it she was like on the top of the world like she had made it she was like this huge pop star like she got so ahead of everything that it was like insane and she lost herself I think it's maybe maybe what she's referencing I don't know no one has said anything about the head of the curve line but that's to me what I took it is like she was just so successful that she lost sight of herself I really like the song definitely up there for me on the album now we have illicit affairs this is a very very close second for me after August. It's like right under August. And I don't think other people are like as big of fans of this song, but it just, the uh, the lyrics in the song, I can't even. I'm not sure, again, what this is about necessarily. I feel like it could kind of relate to the teenage love triangle thing, because like this could be directly referencing August, because um, it was like an illicit affair, but I'm not sure what else it could be about in her life. Some people on the lyric site said it could be about her, the beginnings of her relationship with Joe, potentially, when they were having to like keep everything a secret because she didn't want their relationship to be in the public eye. I, I don't even know where to start with it, but my favorite 
lyrics are the bridge. The bridges, can we just talk about the bridges in this album for a second? Amazing, as Emily would say from Emily and Bonnie's video, superior. <laughs> she really likes that word. <laughs> it's, it's just, it works though, like superior bridges, like the best ever. I feel like Taylor Swift is known for her bridges and they're always good, but this album was like, it truly blew my mind. And this, these lyrics are like, potentially my favorite lyrics of all time of hers. And you want to scream, don't call me kid, don't call me baby, look at this godforsaken mess that you made me, you showed me colors you know I can't see with anyone else, don't call me kid, don't call me baby, look at this idiotic fool that you made me, you taught me a secret language I can't speak with anyone else. And you know damn well, for you I would ruin myself a million little times. Oh my god. I just love how sometimes with music it just puts things into words that you would never have like thought of before. You showed me colors you know I can't see with anyone else. What a line. What a line you guys. I can't even deal with it. Yeah, that's all I have to say for that one. Superior song. <laughs> Invisible String. This is about her relationship with Joe and their kind of connections, like how their lives connected before they were even in each other's lives. Very sweet, very cute song, and it's a little bit more upbeat than some of the other ones. I love how it says, Sad was the blood of the song in the cab on your first trip to LA. You ate at my favorite spot for dinner. So like he heard like this popular song of hers in the cab and he ate at her favorite spot for dinner in LA like without even knowing they'd end up together later. So like throughout it she's talking about like how there was invisible, an invisible string pulling them together or tying them to each other and then in the bridge she says a string that pulled me out of all the wrong arms right into that dive bar and we know she met Joe in a bar, a dive bar in the east side where are you at so like it's connecting back to those lyrics oh my god and then it says one single thread of gold tied me to you and we know she always uses golden and blue when she's referring to Joe so that was so cute and when she says Time, Wonders Time gave me the blues and then purple pink skies. It's referencing like the cover of Lover because of the sunset colors. So yeah, and Lover was all about how happy she was. So yeah, I thought that was so cute. All right, next we have Mad Woman. So I interpreted the song as talking about mad as in angry and insane. I feel like she was kind of playing off of that potential double meaning of the word and it references the man In the man she says what's it like to brag about raking in dollars and getting bitches and models and it's all good if you're bad and it's okay if you're mad if I was out flashing my dollars I'd be a bitch not a baller they'd paint me out to be bad so it's okay that I'm mad I feel like that goes like hand in hand with this song and like connects to it um, and it also could reference the last great American dynasty as well because of how she talked about Rebecca Harkness when it says there goes the maddest woman this town has ever seen which is you know previous song on this album so I feel like that's referencing that as well a lot of people said this is about um, the whole you know scooter thing and other people Emily and Bonnie well when Emily and Bonnie first listened to it they said it was about Kanye or they thought it was about Kanye but then they hadn't thought about how the album connected to the the music record label drama yet so because I mean they came up with their whole video and like all their insights like the very first time they listened to it which I would never have been able to do it takes me a while to like actually understand songs and like even appreciate them and like them so that was very impressive <laughs> but so I don't know if they still think it's about Kanye or if they think it's about Scooter but I feel like it could be about either one or both it kind of just is about like how people por portray her to be like insane when she gets upset about things but maybe really she has a right to get upset about them and then there are a couple lines to discuss. The also like the music in the song. I love the little like do 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 like the little melody that goes behind it. It's so like haunting. The haunting, yeah, that's the word to describe it. The kind of pre-chorus says, every time you call me crazy, I get more crazy. What about that? And when you say I seem angry, I get more angry. So it's like her emotions like wouldn't even be as accentuated if everyone else wasn't invalidating them. The part that they thought was about Kim and Kanye is when it says, and women like hunting witches too, doing your dirtiest work for you. It's obvious that wanting me dead has really brought you two together. Like they thought that was about Kim and like how trying to, you know, hate on her or whatever was bringing them together. And then when she says, the master of spin has a couple side flings, good wives always know she should be mad, should be scathing like me. But no one likes a mad woman. Could be like talking about Kim, but it also could be about Scooter and like the record label. It says, I'm taking my time because you took 
everything from me, watching you climb over people like me. So I really feel like that was a direct reference to that. Yeah. And then we have Epiphany. So this song was about her grandfather's experience in World War II in the first verse, and then the second verse is about most likely the current COVID pandemic. Because like the first time I was listening to it, I was like, okay, like they're in the trenches, it's a war, and then it says, hold your hand through plastic now. And I was like, wait, <laughs> are we still in the war? Like what's going on? But I see what she did with the song and it is amazing. And it's such a beautifully done song. These two events of like the war and the COVID pandemic, she's connecting them because the people fighting the war or the people working on the front lines are like seeing all of this death and experiencing all these like traumatic things. And it says like, only 20 minutes to sleep but you dream of some epiphany. Just one single glimpse of relief to make some sense of what you've seen. They want something that would make it all make sense because it seems so senseless and just like, like unnecessary death and trauma. And the only 20 minutes to sleep is like in the, the trenches and whatnot, they didn't get to sleep for very long and same with healthcare workers like are known for working long shifts. And then the part when it says like in the chorus, with you I serve, with you I fall down, watch you breathe in, watch you breathing out. I feel like that's just talking about like the camaraderie in both situations. So like they're experiencing all these terrible things and witnessing all these terrible events, but they have people by their side enduring it with them. And that just makes it bearable. So that's kind of how I interpreted that. And then we have Betty. So this is the third part of the Teenage Love Triangle and it's about when James comes back to school after the summer affair with potentially Inez or someone else and it's just like he wants to win Betty back basically and apologize so it's like if I showed up at your party would you have me would you want me. This like it's a fun song high school vibes reminds me of 15 a little bit i like how she's returning to high school and kind of like the country vibe of the song it's so sad when he says in the garden would you trust me if i told you it was just a summer thing i'm only 17 i don't know anything but i know i miss you it was just a summer thing like everything we just heard about in august pff, it was just a summer thing for him so like whatever and then in the bridge it says, I was walking home on broken cobblestones just thinking of you when she pulled up like a figment of my worst intentions. She said, James, get in, let's drive. Those j days turned into nights, slept next to her, but I dreamt of you all summer long. So when I said, she said, James, get in, let's drive, directly referencing back to August when it says, remember when I pulled up and said, get in the car. Da, da, da. Yeah. So when it says, slept next to her, but I dreamt of you all summer long, it's like, it's so sad because this other girl loved him so much even though she knew he wasn't hers and like he wasn't even really there. He didn't care about her the same way because he was just thinking about Betty the whole time. And I also hate how we don't know how it ends because the lyrics change at the end. So I showed up at your party. I showed up at your party. Will you have me? Will you love me? Will you kiss me on your porch in front of all your stupid friends? If you kiss me, will it be just like I dreamed it? Will it patch your broken wings? I'm only 17. I don't know anything. I know I miss you standing in your cardigan kissing in my car again, stop the street light, you know I miss you. But we don't actually know what happens, it's still just like, I'm here at your party. And then just like one of my favorite lyrics from the song, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but I just really liked the part when it says, Betty, I'm here on your doorstep. Again, going back to party and standing in your front porch. I planned it out for weeks now, but it's finally sinking in. Betty, right now is the last time I can dream about what happens when you see my face again. It's like when you have something that you know is gonna happen or you want it to happen and you just like build it up in your head so much and imagine it over and over and over and then right before you're like this is actually happening this is the last time I can imagine how it's gonna happen before it actually happens I feel like that's just something that really hit me that I had never like seen written out before I don't know all right two more <laughs> we can do this I can't review the lakes because I haven't heard it Emily and Bonnie said they heard it and they're like oh my god it's great I'm like where did you hear it because it's not on Spotify and when I try to pull it up on YouTube, it's just like fake versions of it. Like it says it's the lakes, but it's really a different song or someone who's not even Taylor Swift singing some made up song. And I'm like, no, I'm not falling for this. But anyway, I'm sure it's a great song. And I can't wait to hear it. But next we have Peace. So the song is similar to The Archer and that she's hoping Joe will stay with her even though she feels like she's not enough for him. And it's basically about how she feels like she can never give him peace because of her fame. And it's like, is that enough? 
Also, the part when she says, give you my wild, give you a child, I was like, excuse me, what? <laughs> but no one has been talking about that online. I mean, Emily and Bonnie freaked out over it, but there's nothing on Genius Lyrics that says anything. One line that says, all these people think love's for show, but I would die for you in secret. It's kind of like, she's not in this for anyone else, but her and Joe. Like, she doesn't want this to be like a huge public thing. She really values their relationship and wants to keep it out of the public eye. She isn't trying to show anything off. It's not flashy, even if people still think that. She's saying, well, I would die for you in secret. So this song is just so meaningful and it's so good. We're gonna keep going because we need to finish. <laughs> then we have Hoax. My only one. My small the first time I listened to the song, I was like, did she and Joe break up? Like, what is going on? Because I was like, this, this sounds like a breakup song. It's so sad. Stood on the cliffside screaming, give me a reason. All these things like saying this has broken me, this has frozen my ground, this has broken me down. Also this part, you knew it still hurts underneath my scars from when they pulled me apart, but what you did was just as dark. Darling, this was just as hard as when they pulled me apart, because I took that to be like, you know, when everyone was hating on her, you knew it still hurts underneath my scars from when they pulled me apart. What you did was just as dark. What did he do? <laughs> Like, what happened? Because this has to be about Joe because of all the blue references. This also relates to Cardigan because in Cardigan she said, you drew stars around my scars but now they're bleeding. So I don't know what that's supposed to be. Please let me know. Um, but a lot of people have been pointing out that this is like false god where it's like your faithless love's the only hoax I believe in. Kind of the religious metaphor there. So aside from those lyrics that I don't understand, I feel like the song's just kind of about like how even though her and Joe's relationship isn't perfect and they still have like really hard sad times, she still would rather have it with him than anyone else. So when she says, don't want no other shade of blue but you, no other sadness in the world would do, it's like even if they have these super sad times and these hard times, she'd ra rather be with him than anyone else. Like she wants the good and the bad with him and I just feel like that's such a mature view and just, I don't know, I just love it. What an amazing end to the album, like, can we just? And as I said, I still haven't been able to hear the lake, so we'll see what that holds when when we get that. But yeah, that was my review. Sorry it was like a million years long, but there was just so much to say, okay? I'm gonna link Emily and Bonnie's video down below. Um, they have two, actually. They have an original one and then like a revisited one and like a music video reaction, so I'll link them down below. Please check them out because they're hilarious and they're so good and they, you know, discussed it more as well, so. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please leave me your thoughts down below. Let me know what your favorite songs are. Let me know what you thought of the lyrics, what your favorite lyric was, <laughs> what your opinions were. I want to know. Leave it down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I make videos every Monday. I will see you guys next time. Bye!